This week's tutorial is based on a question from Close Brace Weekly reader David. Thanks, David. He's using a built-in JS method, array.reduce, to combine the values in an array into a final sum. The thing is, his array doesn't contain numbers, it contains objects, each of which may contain a number that needs to be added. He's using his reducer function to iterate through those objects and, if they have a number, add it to the total, for which he's using the variable name memo. Here's his initial code. I'm making up the array since I don't have access to his data. Save this and refresh, and we get 45 as expected, the total number of hours in all of the cards. So first things first, this is fine. The code works, it's readable, and it's not overly complicated. For this tutorial, I'm going to reformat it a bit, and I'm going to do so in ES6, although there's no reason that's necessary. I'm just used to writing in it now, and I like the additional variable checking it provides by default, e.g. not being able to overwrite a const. Here's how I'd write that same function. Save that, we should get 45 again. There we go. So, mine does the same thing and it's substantially shorter, but is it more readable? That's debatable. If you're used to reading ternary operators, which we covered in JS Quick Hits 9, and implicit returns, which we covered in JS Quick Hits 12, then I think this code's a bit more elegant. If you're looking for instant readability, I'd actually stick with David's original, albeit with a couple of small tweaks. If you wanted to cross between the two, you could maybe skip the implicit return, like this. Save that. Refresh and we'll get a third 45. Guess we should go ahead and mark this too. But let's talk about what I changed and what I didn't. The first thing I did was leave all of the variable names alone. I did this because I don't know what the rest of David's application looks like. That said, I find the use of card for an array of multiple objects to be a little confusing. I'd probably call it cards. Also, I wouldn't capitalize card in my reducer function, because generally, capitalized variables are reserved specifically for constructors rather than for objects. You might create a new card object, lowercase, from a card constructor, uppercase, and then store an array of those card objects in an array called cards. But there may be reasons I don't know for this naming convention. The next thing I did was convert to an arrow function because that allows for an implicit return. Following that, I replaced the if-else block with a ternary operator, which drops it down to one line, which also allows for the implicit return. What this line says is basically the same thing as the original function. If the card has hours, add them to the memo and return that value. Otherwise, just return the memo plus zero more hours. Except I removed the plus zero because memo plus zero is just memo, so there's no need for it. Important. You need this zero that's at the end of all the functions. Array.reduce takes an initial value as its second argument, so if you replaced that zero with, say, 15, your final output would be 60. If your array was strictly numerical values, you could get away with omitting the zero entirely, because if an initial value argument isn't supplied, Array.reduce just uses the first item in the array as the initial value. But our first item is an object, not a number, and adding a number to an object makes no sense. So we provide an initial value that sets memo to zero at the beginning of the loop. If you want to avoid using ES6 in a ternary operator, here's how I'd rewrite David's code. Save this. Actually, let's change this zero to a 15. That should log 60. And it does. This eliminates that unnecessary plus zero, and it also skips the else lines from the original function. Why? Because your if is already triggering a return, so either the function returns at that point and skips the rest of the function, or it moves past the if and then just returns the value of the accumulator. This is an implied else, and is a good pattern to get used to. You'll see it a lot, especially from teams that are using Airbnb's linting rules, which is a lot of teams. So there you go a few different flavors of array.reduce, each with their pros and cons. What do you all think? Which style do you prefer? Leave me a comment. It's also important to remember in coding that readability and adhering to your team's style is almost always more important than getting things down to the minimal possible number of lines. 
After all, we have code minifiers to do that for us. That said, if you can one-line the code and still have it be readable, it's generally a good thing. That's about it for this tutorial. Thanks again to David for the question, and I'll catch you all next week.